Welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about foods for the menstrual cycle. What foods should you be eating on your period time or around your period time to help optimize what could be happening? And also to treat some of these things through Chinese medicine, diet therapy, PMS, pain, like menstrual cramps, anxiety, or mental disturbance around your cycle time. Like that's what we're going to talk about in this video. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, then all your dreams are going to come true. <laughs> you click that button. No, they're not, but they might. <laughs> so click the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers this year, and I'd love you to do that. So, so click that button and uh, stop, I'll stop asking you to click it. So let's talk about the cycle itself and the aspects of it in a Chinese medicine way. So we have four parts of the cycle and we can divide those four parts again into two so we can think of the cycle in a yin and a yang type of the cycle so to support what should be happening there are so, some foods that are really good at that and that's what i'm going to focus on this video i'm not going to give you hundreds of foods we're just going to talk about five different foods five things we can do in that, to support that the first part of the cycle that we want to talk about is the premenstrual time, the week before you get your period. So that's the week from about day, if you had a regular cycle, the day 21 to the 28. So if you're not familiar with this, many women are, so that's okay because someone has to teach you. <laughs> day one is the first day of the bleeding, right? The first day when the period comes, that's called your day one. And the day 28 would be the day before the next day one. So if by saying you've got a 28-day cycle would mean that, yeah, there was day one was the period time. And so there might be four, five, maybe seven days of bleeding. And then the next seven days is after that, next seven days after that. And now we're at the next seven days, right? The seven days before your cycle comes. And this is when people get a thing called PMS, premenstrual syndrome or symptoms, maybe you could say, premenstrual tension, PMT used to be called. And in Chinese medicine, why are we getting those symptoms and what are they? So why we get them is because qi needs to move at that point, right? The liver or the wood element is responsible for the free flow of movement in our body. So moving and spreading in all directions. And your body needs that energy to literally move blood. So what's been happening is blood's been building up in the uterus and it's like getting ready to be moved and it's and you can easily get what we call chi stagnation if you're around a tcm practitioner you would have heard this before liver chi stagnation it's a super common diagnosis and it's literally energy that wants to move but it can't move it's stuck so what things move that chi well glad you asked <laughs> pungent food so the first food for your cycle that you should have before your cycle starts right the week before the few days before and especially if you start to feel things like breast distension like that means around your breasts they feel heavy they feel maybe painful they could be some people find they feel painful or sensitive to be touched like they knock their chest and like, oh wow it really hurts that's breast distension or breast even breast pain if you're not sure about breast pain, you've got to go to your doctor, your GP, and have a breast check, right? I'm not saying don't do that, if it's up there, but this is for people that know that that's what it is. It's sort of a thing that comes and goes. It wouldn't linger on after your period of time. Pungent foods. So what are pungent foods? Pungent foods is things like ginger, garlic, mint, coriander, basil, cinnamon. So particularly warm and pungent is better. And the two foods I like to recommend is ginger. One is because it's easy to get. Most food shops, most grocery stores sell ginger. Fresh ginger is what you, you really want. What you really, really, really want. What you want, what you really, really want is fresh ginger, not the dried ginger because it's going to act in a different way. The dried ginger is another different video. So you want that fresh ginger and cinnamon. So any kind of cinnamon really you could use. You can get go to a Chinese herbal store, send for some cinnamon if you want. There's hundreds of varieties of cinnamon, but they all tend to have this moving effect. De de definitely a moving chi kind of effect, especially when we're talking about foods. You would have to have a quite a bit of cinnamon. as a, It's not a sprinkle of cinnamon. It's not sort of like a Johnny Depp cinnamon sprinkle in the air. Right? It's like an actual lot of cinnamon. So put a teaspoon of cinnamon into the cooking that you do or something like that into, the, into a bowl of food. You could make a cinnamony gingery drink with some other stuff. I would advise you to add some honey into that. Now you don't want so much pungent that it's going to make you sweat. 
that's not the purpose of this kind of pungent. That kind of pungent is for if you've got a cold or a flu, you're taking that cinnamon, ginger with some other stuff probably to push open the pores, make you sweat. You don't want that. You just want to move that chi. Another good herb that's good at this is like spring onions, shallots, these kinds of things. They're aromatic, they're moving, they can open, move and feel good. <laughs> so you want to have that before. Now, how could you get that? Have a curry, right? Have a curry the, the few days before your cycle. If it's the heat of summer, you're probably not feeling like a curry. But if it's the winter time, perfect. That's great. Second food that's also in curry for most of the time would be a food that helps to nourish blood. So now we're talking about not just before the period time, but after the period time or during the period time, what do we want to do? So blood's leaving the body. So we certainly don't want to cool our body down. So what you shouldn't have is ice cream. You should not have ice cream. You should not have freezing cold drinks. You should not be in a cold bath or cold water and stuff like that on your lady time and your cycle time. But after that, you want to warm and nourish. So ginger and meat. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> I love meat. <laughs> so lamb is a good one. Any kind of meat, really, like chicken, even fish, bone broth, that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of that because if you love meat, you, you'll know what the meats are. If you don't love meats, you don't want to hear about what the meats are. <laughs> so if you're not a meat eater... If you happen to be a vegetarian or a vegan, you can have berries. And the other people, the meat eaters, can also have berries. But berries, especially blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, they are blood-nourishing fruits. And how I would have them is warm. Put them on some pancakes or make a little berry, com it's called compote, <laughs> berry sauce that you mix with. Well, what I this is how I make it. I make this for my little nephew, well, I made it for myself, but then my little nephew knows that I make it. And he's asked, he asked me to make it when he comes over sometimes. So what I do is you get the, if you've got frozen berries, because sometimes that's all that you can have, because they last forever almost in the freezer. So you get a couple of scoops of those frozen berries and you put them in a, you know, just in a fry pan, put a little bit of butter in the fry pan first. So put those berries in there, give them a good old mix, let, and they'll defrost in the pan as you're sort of cooking them in that fry pan. And then you can add... A little bit of ginger into there so a couple of couple of bits of grated couple of slices of grated ginger or just some big chunks of ginger that you've cut up somehow you could add that in there just give it a good old mix and you make a little sauce out of it and it literally just makes like a berry sauce now what you could do with that is you could just eat that you could put that on your pancakes or put it on your meat <laughs> if you're a carnivore but you wouldn't be eating that if you're a carnivore but get the idea if you are what would you, you you could just have it as a drink you could have it kind of as a smoothie so the point is try to make it warm with the ginger the ginger is going to help warm it if it's in the middle of summer you probably could have it raw berries raw if you've got fresh blueberries fresh raspberries that's even better you could just eat some of those or you can keep them up in the pan like that but that you don't need to put much butter just a tiny bit at the start and then i put like a decent amount and i just usually make it like a little little container of sauce and then i will pour that sauce on the pancakes or something you don't need to add any sugar to it if you want you could add honey but you don't need to you don't it will taste quite sweet almost by itself so that's a cool thing so berries are good anything that's blue dark 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 blue dark red tends to nourish blood so other blood nourishing foods could be things like beetroot that's probably it at the moment that's coming to my top of my head so that's the first food i wanted to say was moving chi before you cycle the pungent foods the, the the pungent aromatic spices the second one the second food for your cycle is meat bone broth all kinds of meats third one that nourishes blood is going to be the berries now when would you have those the first half the, the the days of the bleeding right up until the, the the day 21 or even just after that is okay right? so that's supporting blood it's helping blood nourish helping blood helping you make blood that's how you make a period if you're suffering with low periods but that's not really a thing <laughs> it's called amenorrhea like not being able to get a period so not not able to produce blood or you've got a, a scanty uterus lining how would you know that because you might be going through fertility treatments and they've checked your lining with this with an ultrasound or something and they're like oh your lining should should be thicker so you need blood tonic foods and if you're a vegetarian or a vegan that's probably the reason right in chinese medicine it's just part of it sorry about that but it is and if you're not, you can try to have a bit more meat, a bit of bone broth, 
and those areas are really good. So we've got that. Now, the next thing that you're probably thinking about, two things I want to talk about with the cycle that we can help with foods. One is the mental distress that some people get associated with the PMS and even with the period pain, with the period itself. And this could be something like when you have premenstrual dysmorphic disorder, like an extreme a PMS sort of situation or a psychiatric disorder. Now, if you've got that, you're probably on medication and you're probably seeing a, a practitioner, a doctor, Western medicine doctor for it and all that sort of stuff. But there are foods that can help with that mental anguish. And one of those foods is actually lily bulb. And the reason why I'm mentioning it is because one, it's easy to get. Now I did a whole video on the lily bulb, so I might just link that below and you can look up, look up, look up how to use it on there. But it's, you can buy it dried and soak it. I have it somewhere on my shelf here. Right, yeah. So that's what it looks like. So it's kind of, it's a white, these are white pieces of the, of the lily there. See that, white, the white lily. Ooh, whoops. And that's the dried version of it, right? You can buy it fresh from many Oriental Asian grocery stores. You can buy it fresh and you can just cook with that. Now, if you don't really need it as a food, it's not going to harm you. So you could just include it in your diet and it's got a nutty, landy, nutty texture to it. It's quite nice. It's not, it's not horrible. So that's one food. Another food that's used in Chinese diet therapy for blood stagnation, which is the pain of periods, is usually caused by blood stasis. A food that's used is ojia, which is lotus. So you can eat those lotuses. <laughs> They're white and they've got little holes in them. I remember once when I went to China, I was having a bit of period pain and I was with a girl from a factory that had take, taken me for dinner in between, taken me for lunch, sorry, in between visiting one factory to go into another factory. We just were literally in the middle of nowhere in this little farm stop type of place, right? It was a countryside eatery. <laughs> Lots of Westerners don't like eating in those places, but I, I love it because they're like very interesting especially if i'm with another chinese person because i can tell them could they make this or that well now that i know the names of some of the foods and she said oh what do you want to eat normally with chinese food they 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 it's not like chinese food in australia where you get combination fried rice or something you've got a bit of a combination you've got all these different dishes that they're going to order so it's definitely better when you go with other people and i said i'll just have some oj yeah i said and she looks at me funny i just want a plate of veg this this vegetable i was like just want that because I knew it would be a whole thing and I wouldn't be able to eat all of it anyway. And she'll eat some of it, hopefully. But she was like, looking at me strangely. This And this is a lady from a factory that's nothing to do with Chinese medicine. Anyway, the, the old jail arrives and I start eating it. It's like, it's like oh, so so strange. So so strange, you know. You know what this is? She was like, in China, it's it's good for the ladies' time or something like this. She said to me, good for the lady time. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell her that I was like buried pain on that day or whatever. But I was like, well, I'm in China and I know that they'll have this food here. I may as well, I may as well make use of it. Anyway, she just thought it was hilarious that I would order a whole dish of old jail and that I would know what old jail was. Anyway, so the uh, lotus, right? And it's crunchy and it's usually in lots of dishes where they add it in, you're eating it, and you sort of have this crunchy, blandy flavour, really, watery, bland flavour. So, so lotus is for blood stasis blood stagnation so when you've got period pain or dysmenorrhea as it's formerly known there's a stagnation there there's a stuckness of chi to move blood which is what we were talking about before about the liver chi stagnation leading to the pms time and then it's almost like there's there's this stuck stuckness of chi to move blood and blood becomes stuck and that's kind of how we see most of the most types of period pain so if that's happening, you definitely want warmness, right? You want ginger, you probably want cinnamon, you probably want just warm, lots of warm stuff like, you know, a water pot, water bottle, all that kind of thing. But those kinds of foods can be used. So they're the five foods you can use for your menstrual cycle for today anyway, this video. So one is pungent foods, cinnamon, garlic, ginger, mint, coriander, basil, lemongrass, anything else like that. Those kinds of pungent foods have a curry. Right. The second one is meat is going to help to tonify blood. So any kinds of meat and berries, there's the third one. And both of those things are good for the second half of your cycle where you're building blood, you're tonifying blood. The fourth one was for calming your mind. We think of that this herb as by her or lily bulb. And that's the herb you can buy fresh if possible and cook with that. 
and that's to cope with the mental distress that might happen around usually the last half of the cycle into the maybe even in the cycle the period time if you've got lots of pain and if you do have pain old air the lotus is one of the best foods to eat and you don't have to just wait until the pain comes you could have that a few days before as well as during the cycle so i hope this video has been interesting useful and helpful to you and if it has leave a comment below and let me know i love reading comments and knowing that it's helped you thank you so much for your support of the channel if you want to support what i do on here more you can subscribe that's the first thing there i do have a course called five element self-care self-care with the five elements something like that you can click the link below to find out more it's a low cost course and it's um, helping you to discover who you are in a five element way and to apply the things of Chinese medicine that are going to help you to benefit yourself, live a long, healthy life using those tools within Chinese medicine to benefit you mentally, physically, socially, all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, you can uh, subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you again on another video soon. Thank you so much. Bye.